Good day, everyone. So for today's discussion, we are going to talk about journalizing and posting transactions. So it has something to do with business and distributive arts. So first, let's uh, define what journalizing means. Just give me one second. Okay, so it says here that journalizing is the methodical documenting of transactions in the appropriate journals. Every event is documented with double entry and an opposite entry is completed as well. No? So when we say methodical documenting, it should be very organized when you document your transactions for whatever business you have. Okay, so posting. What does posting means? Does it mean posting your uh, new photos in social media or whatnot? Let's see. Anyway, we're talking about business and distributive parts, okay? So um, posting means um, this is where you transfer the data you have recorded in journalizing to ledger accounts. Posting is the step after accurately journalizing. So, you know, it's just like, uh, uh, you know, when you are having a investigatory project, you gather data so that you will have your tentative thoughts, you no? Know? And then after you gather your data, or if um, we, have, we will have it in a business, after you journalize your data, you will post it. You, know? you will transfer your data that you have recorded. Make sure that uh, in transferring your data, you already corrected whatever um, uh, whatever information that needs to be included or eliminated. Okay. So how do you journalize and post transactions? First, create journal entries no so you need to gather your journal entries okay and then second make sure debits and credits are equal in your journal entries you know there should be equality of the debits and credits in your journal entries third move each journal entry to its individual account in the ledger. Example, checking account. Four, use the same debits and credits and do not change any information. So the information for the debits and credits are very confidential and very crucial to handle. Make sure that the spellings are correct, the dates are accurately um, recorded and everything, all the info should be um, correct, okay? What is a general ledger? So when you say general ledger, it is a record used to sort and summarize business transactions. In your ledger, record transactions using debits and credits the debits and credits must always balance. Like what I've said, it should always be equal. They are equal but opposite entries. If they don't balance, your books and financial statements will be inaccurate. Samples of ledgers. So we have your general ledger and accounting ledger and bill planner in accounting ledger. Okay, so that's how it looked like. So this is just a, a basic knowledge you know, of journalizing and posting transactions in business and distributive arts. So again, this is just a basic knowledge. So there are five main account types in a general ledger. What are they? First, assets. So what is the asset for assets? So it says here that it is a resource with economic value that an individual, corporation, or country owns or controls with the expectation that it will provide a future benefit. 
assets are reported in a company's balance sheet and are bought or created to increase the firm's value or benefit the firm's operations. So, no? so it is, um, when you say asset, it has an economic value no? that an individual cooperation or country owns or control with the expectation that it will provide a future benefit. So let's say, for example, as a, um, let's say you are a new teacher and you were um, you have the opportunity to have a loan of one million. So you are uh, torn in between the idea of building a mansion or building a poultry farm, no? So, unsay asset ana, building a house or a mansion or um, having a poultry farm. Of course, having a poultry farm, diba? So, it is a business that you know in the future you will get uh, benefits, you know, you will get your profit or your income later on, depending sa paghandle sa business. So again, asset, keyword is economic value. Okay, meaning, mapagkitaan mo siya in the future. Second, liabilities. It has something to do with a person or company owes, usually a sum of money, recorded on the right side of the balance sheet. Liabilities include loans, accounts payable, mortgages, deferred revenues, bonds, and uh, I mean warranties and accrued expenses. So, you know, so this is very obvious. So liabilities might include your loans, mga, mga bayarin ni mo, no, same home business, mga rents, and so on and so forth. Okay, equity. It represents the value that would be returned to a company's shareholders if all of the assets were liquidated and all the company's debts were paid off. So let me give you an example for equity. No? Um, let's say you are a member of a cooperative bank and you have this so-called... Um, you have this so-called dividend no, in uh, every year. So you have your share capital and you have your savings, you have your loans. So let's say you have three pass books. So in your share capital sa company, um, di ha magbasi kung pila ang imuhang maloan no, sa share capital ni mo. So, kanay mong share capital, mutubo na siya every year. So, pag liquidate sa cooperative bank every year and uh, nabahi na ta na ng expenses ang mga bay bayroon nun, no? And then, e-divide na ang ginansya kung pilay, uh, pilay imuhang ma-earn ng dividend for that year. That one also depends on your share capital. Okay, so example ana is the cooperative bank. Fourth is revenue or income. It is the total amount of income generated by the sale of goods or services related to the company's primary operations. Revenue, also known as gross sales, is often referred to as the top line because it sits at the top of the income statement. Income or net income is a company's total earnings or profit. So revenue or income, no? Very understandable. So your fifth, uh, I mean our fifth um, is the expenses. It is the cost of operations that a company incurs to generate revenue, okay? So, unsa may imuhang um, bigas to for this particular business. So, list down ni mo. Pati sa pinakagamay na amount 
a list down nimo. Okay, para later on, pag liquidate, we will know if you earn something from that business. Okay? So, in siya na basic understanding of our journalizing and posting transactions. But we have more. So, journal entries. Every time your business makes a transaction, you must record it on your books. There are a few steps you have to follow when accounting for a transaction. The first step is to record transactions in a journal. Okay? And in recording, you have to put a date para ma, 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 ni mo, <clears throat> ma balance ni mo, um, na kay kuan ba, na kay history, no, sa mong journal entries, sa mong mga transactions for that particular date, for that particular year or a month. Okay. Use your journal to identify transactions. Your journal gives you a running list of business transactions. Each line in the journal is known as the journal entry. And each journal entry provides specific information about the transaction, including date of the transaction. Yeah, that's what I've told you. Um, Second, description or notes. So in your description, it should be in a bullet type, like no need for you to have it in a sentence. Just use keywords, no? Uh, that would be easier to understand and brief to explain. Account name, amount, example, $100. So journal entries also use the five main accounts and sub-accounts to stay organized. And journal entries use required debits and credits. When recording journal entries, make sure your debits and credits are balanced. So always take note of that. Debits and credits affect the five main accounts differently. Some accounts are increased by debits, while others are increased by credits. Use the chart below to see how debits and credits affect accounts. So we have a sample chart, very easy to understand. So let's say your account, uh, you have there your assets increased by debit, decreased by credit. Expenses increased by debit, decreased by credit. Liabilities increased by credit, decreased by debit. Equity increased by credit, decreased by debit. Revenue increased by credit, decreased by debit. Example journal entries. Journal entries may sound confusing at first, but once you get the hang of it, recording journal entries will be less intimidating. Take a look at how it's done below. Say, you paid rent for your business location. Your rent is $1,500 per month. Your journal entry would look something like this. Okay, your date, your account expense, notes. So, no, I told you earlier, your notes should be in a keyword form. Um, paid rent. So, your debit is one five. And then below, you have under account, you have cash, credit, one five. That's it. Your expense account increases with the debit. Debit your expense account $1,500 to show an increase from the rent expense. Your cash account is an asset to decrease your cash account credit at $1,500. How to post journal entries to the general ledger? After you record your transactions in your journal, it's time to transfer them to your general ledger. So this is now the final destination of the records. No? To keep your books accurate, post every transaction from your journal to your general ledger. Use your ledger to classify and organize transactions, journal entry into an individual account. Then transfer the debit and credit amounts from your journal to your ledger account. Your journal entries act like a set of instructions. When posting journal entries to your general ledger, do not change any information. Make sure that your information are final. For example, if you debit an account in a journal entry, debit the same account in your ledger. 
keep in mind that your general ledger lists all the transactions in a single account. This allows you to know the balance of each account, but to find the balance, you need to do some math. After posting entries to the ledger, calculate the following balances. Asset and expense accounts, subtract total credits from total debits. Okay, simply subtract total credits from total debits. Liabilities, equities, and revenue accounts subtract total debits from total credits. If you don't want to mess with the calculations yourself, consider investing in accounting software. When accounting with accounting software, you can record transactions in your ledger and the software handles the calculations for you. So that would be a lot easier. And if you're a little lost, don't stress. Instead, follow the steps below to post journal entries to the general ledger. First, create journal entries. Second, make sure debits and credits are equal in your journal entries. Third, move each journal entry to its individual account in the ledger, example, a checking account. Use the same debits and credits and do not change any information. Five, calculate account balances in your general ledger. Okay. To keep your records accurate, uh, you should post to the general ledger as you make transactions at the end of each period. Example, month, transfer journal entries into your ledger, and then ledger entries are separated into different accounts. The accounts called P accounts organize your debits and credits for each account. There is a P account for each category in your accounting journal. Here is an example of what your general, general ledger account may look like after posting journal entries. Okay, there you go. We have the table. So the subtotal row gives you details about the subtotals for your debits here. Total of 3,500 in credits. Um, because this is a tracking asset account, deduct the credits from your debits to get the, to the, um, the account's total balance. So why are ledger entries important? There are a number of reasons why ledger entries are so important. So it keep you organized. It make it easier to find transactions. Compart uh, compartmentalized construction. So it's just the same with organized, no? Um, let you see the big picture of your company's financial health show you patterns in income and expenses and that's it hope you enjoy this video and please like and subscribe to my channel thank you for watching you have a good day everyone